All right, coming up. Welcome to the Uffsides NFL Podcast. I'm Matt Ufford. With me today in the studio is four-time Pro Bowl center and a captain of the 94 Chargers team that went to the Super Bowl, Courtney Hall. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, let's also get down the list of your resume right now. You are the co-founder and managing director of Hillcrest Venture Partners, a venture capital firm. So uh, your post-NFL career is going okay. It's coming along. It's coming along. Uh, and uh, Mayor Michael Bloomberg's appointee to the New York City Campaign Finance Committee. I have no idea what that is, but that sounds really important. <laughs> it is. We uh, basically manage the uh, public funds of the uh, campaign finance. Uh, Just yeah. you know, one of the world's largest cities, no big deal. It's kind of, kind of big, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, you very obviously have uh, better things to do, so thank you for slumming it with us today. <laughs> uh, let's get right into things with um, the worst of the worst of NFL's week 13. What was I think it was week 13. Uh, yeah, yeah. 13, unlucky number. Uh, yeah, so I think that, man, the, the absolute worst game maybe of the entire year happened in, uh, in New Jersey when the Cardinals visited the Jets this weekend. 7-6 to six at Jets win. Mark Sanchez finally benched. Uh, did you have the misfortune of watching this game? I caught bits and pieces of it. Um, so I was at another game, and um, I was kept looking at the score. It was like, you know, 0-0, zero to 7-6. Zero, to six. I didn't um, realize how bad it was until I got home and I... Saw ESPN. I'm like, you know, what is it? Five interceptions. It was it was four interceptions. Four interceptions. Uh, okay. Five turnovers in the game. The Jets. Uh, there you go. The Jets lost the uh, the turnover uh, battle at minus three, even though they had the ball for 38 <laughs> minutes. Wow. I want I want to go through the uh, this is the starting the starting quarterbacks lines. Ryan Lindley was 10 for 31, 10 for, for 72 yeah. yards and an interception That's for a awful. 28.0. Quarterback rating. That's like Pop Warner rating. Right it's there. yeah, uh, yeah. That was awful. And uh, Sanchez, even worse. Uh, Ten of twenty-one for ninety-seven yards, three interceptions for a twenty-one point four rating. Of course, nobody threw a touchdown pass until uh, Greg McElroy came in and uh, saved the Jets. Greg, what was his line, by the way? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I I got I blacked out when I was looking at the uh, <laughs> when I was looking at the box score for this. Uh, Cardinals had five first downs the entire game. 0 for 15 on third down. That's awful. That and, is truly awful. And uh, this, is, this is the order of uh, possessions in the first half. Punt, interception, turnover on downs, missed field goal, punt, interception, punt, 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 interception, interception, missed field goal, punt, punt. And then a fake punt leads to fake a field punt. goal as time expires in the first half. Oh, lovely. Got the Cardinals on the board. Were there any like special teams uh, records set for number of punt return yards? or? <sighs> I Not that I saw, Should but but it was... <laughs> had enough opportunities. That's I had true. that... Uh, I had. Uh, I was watching... I'm a Seahawks fan, so I was okay. watching the Seahawks uh, and Sorry Chargers. To hear that. Sorry to hear that. It, yeah, well, it's... Uh, <laughs> you were, uh, as a Chargers, uh, as a Chargers player, of course, you were up against the Seahawks when they were Seahawks, in the AFC West. When they were AFC West. And, uh, I mean, those were great times for me because I knew the Seahawks... Those were teams on the on our schedule that we probably were going to beat. Yeah, yeah, the Seahawks had a bad a bad decade, a bad couple of decades actually. But but except but for except for when you had like Meyer or when he was up there, he gave us some fits because we could never catch him. I mean, he was he, not, neither could the Seahawks. There, uh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> when his, the, th- the balls that he threw. Oh man, the Seahawks in the nineties were a really that bad, was team. A bad team. You're that welcome. Was bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of speaking of the Chargers and uh, the worst teams in the NFL, the the Chargers oh kind of deserve a nod here. They've lost seven of eight, I think. They are not looking well, and and I and I think it goes for me. I look at it, and I was I think it goes back. Vincent Jackson left, you know, Antonio Gates on the downside of his career, a fabulous career. And how many offensive linemen have they lost this? You know, early on this year, I don't know. It's uh, that that line is a shambles, and yeah. uh, the last two years, Philip Rivers has uh, has gone from All Pro quarterback to w- what's he doing? Man, I, I, again, I you know I think Philip has done a great job since he's been there, and you know w- I think with all quarterbacks, a, a lot of people don't really realize how you know how critical it is to have some supporting cast. Like you don't have receivers around you, you don't have the running back to um, take pressure off the uh, running game or take pressure off the passing game. An offensive line. I mean, Cutler. You know, there t- at times. I I told my friends in Chicago. It's like the Bears have got to have one of the worst, if not the worst, offensive line ever. Oh yeah, that's, um, it's bad. Pretty bad. And you know, it 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 shows in some of some of Cutler's stats. And when they're blocking well, 
you know, Cutler does well. It's a good quarterback. Yeah, it's uh, uh, not a whole lot's going on. That's a very one-dimensional offense in in uh, Chicago, where it's. I, but the thing is, that one dimension, Cutler to That's Brandon Marshall, good. is pretty fantastic. <laughs> it's pretty good. But yeah, so back to uh, Rivers. I mean, I you know, I, I think he's a good quarterback. I think he's doing great. I think they need to get. They need, need to get him some help. They, they do, and uh, he, he's not getting it from his line, not getting it from yeah. his receivers, and certainly not from Ryan Matthews. <laughs> That's, uh, Ryan, Ma- Ryan Matthews, he's uh, – who is that guy? I I don't know. <laughs> some people – some people. I only hear about him from people who are angry at their fantasy team. Yeah, I, I heard him. he was like a number one draft choice one year, or was he – uh, uh, yeah, then he got sw- he body swapped out with uh, somebody so. who had never played football before, I think. Actually, it's probably me. I'm probably like <laughs> – <laughs> Take his helmet off. You need to make sure it's not like a Superman Clark Kent, like it's actually the same person. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old man. Yeah. Wait a minute. You're not Ryan Matthews. Uh, let's let's flip things up and, and uh, let's talk about the best teams in the NFL. Um, l- tell me, first tell me, what, who's your Super Bowl pick? Who's your week 13? Who do you think is going to be in the Super Bowl February, whatever it is? So, you know, it, I was at the, uh, the Steelers game, and as much as I, I hate to admit it, I think – Without um, Ben Roethlisberger, they look like a decent team. With Ben, with getting Ben back, you know the defense. Uh, you know you can't say enough about them. I think they have a real good shot. You can never count them out. You no, know? you're the second consecutive guest who's uh, uh, who's I, stuck with uh, the Steelers as a Super Bowl. Pick. I, I got I, I love defense, and I and I really uh, uh, subscribe to what people say about defense wins championships. And so if you can have the defense that gets you through kind of the tough times, you know picks up a few wins for you. Then your offense gets churning. Roethlisberger is going to be back, healthy, fresh, fresh rested. Um, I think they they can go a long way. He is uh, really annoying to watch as a fan of other teams. Uh, <laughs> you just want him to be tackled, and he just sheds. Like, tackle that guy. He just then, sheds have, defensive have tackles. You, have you been next to Roethlisberger? Like, have you seen? He's a giant. He is huge. He's, He's a huge. I mean, I sat next to him one time at, at some event, and I'm like, this guy is huge. His, uh, you're you're a large man. You're you're actually I, I didn't include this on your uh, on your resume. You're actually the largest person to ever be in this room. Oh my god! Uh, but uh, I get a plaque or but I uh, or a coffee. We'll get, get one. Coffee. We'll a get refill? one. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you a refill on coffee. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. But Ben Roethlisberger's head is like twice the size of yours. His his wow. head is gigantic. That's pretty big. He is a massive. <laughs> it's like an over. It's like a. It's like a, uh, an overgrown potato that wins like the the, the award at a at a, at a state That's fair. That's a massive head. That's <laughs> <laughs> what about what about the NFC though? Who's who's going to be playing the Steelers in the Super Bowl? God, the NFC. So, not totally sold on the Falcons. No, I don't think anybody is, except for maybe the the, the occasional wayward Falcons fan. Yeah, I'm not totally sold on the Falcons. Um, I mean, obviously, Green Bay's, you know, they're be, just because they have the experience. 49ers, you know, they're going to be in a, they're going to be tough. I think. I think so. You know, someone posed me a question like, "Why would uh, Kaepernick? You know, why would you start him? Although he lost, would you bench him?" I think it gives them a lot of weapons coming down. You know, down the last uh, part of the season. Um, you know, Alex Smith. You know, he's a good quarterback. I don't think he's great. Um, Kaepernick's a solid guy. You have two options there um, that can really uh, throw defenses for a loop. I feel like uh, uh, Jim Harbaugh is kind of like the at a stage where every single fantasy football owner is every uh-huh. week. Who, when you've got like two <laughs> running backs and you're like, I who's who's going to have the better yeah. game? And like yeah. Harbaugh's like, I don't I don't know these. I don't know who's going to have the good yeah, game I today. Think, listen, they have they're in a great situation, and obviously their defense is great. They got a great running game. You know the receivers. You know, tight end. I mean, you go down the line, they look like they have the most complete team. They just need that quarterback who's not going to lose the game. They, we just, used to, they we, just need a Trent Dilfer. I mean, love Trent. They think he's a great analyst, but <laughs> <laughs> you can you can you can finish that sentence. Tell me what you think of his quarterbacking abilities. Trent Dilfer. Hey, he has Super Bowl ring. He's yep. won Super Bowls, and there you go. That's that's all you need to say. Really doesn't matter, <laughs> right? No, um, I guess not. But uh, but yeah, I think I think. Right now, I would say San Francisco um, is my favorite team. Um, I mean, the Bears, you know, we were talking earlier about one-dimensional. They may sneak up and and win a few, but I would say Frisco and um, the Packers are my favorites. Um, I think that's uh, those are uh, both solid decisions. I think the Bears, the Bears run into problems. It doesn't look like a team that can win uh, away in the playoffs. No. 
No. Um, and, and and not to hold up the the loss in San Francisco as a, as a model for that, mm-hmm. because I, I think you know any given Sunday you can get up and down performances. Yeah. But yeah. I would not trust them to win an away game. Not at all. Uh, let's let's go into more about you and your career. And this is uh, this is really fascinating because you're uh, <laughs> you have you have this uh, a, a second uh, uh, a second chapter to your career where you're just completely different direction. You. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you have a, a law degree and an MBA from the University of Chicago. Yep. That's, um, that's uh, more schooling than most uh, <laughs> former all pros get. Uh, what, how did you tell me about your, your academic career? And it's like you had this, uh, this NFL career grafted onto this highly successful uh, pinstriped career of yours. Well, I mean, so uh, for me, it goes back to really, you know, high school, um, college. Um, when I was coming out of, of, um, High school. Um, I don't know if you remember a quarterback named Jamel Holloway. I, I do not. Okay. So he was a quarterback, came out of my high school. He went to Oklahoma, won championship in, uh, as a true freshman. Um, so I had a choice to go to USC, um, University of Southern California, not South Carolina, or Rice University. And I was 6'2", 210 pounds. And, you know, as, when, as a lot of high school students are. Yeah, yeah, a lot of high school <laughs> offensive linemen. Um, so, <laughs> and, you know, for me it was about academics. And I got to Rice and uh, went 0-11 my senior year. And so I was looking at, well, like, what's my next job? Because I'm certainly not going to the NFL. Um, had a lot of lucky breaks, got drafted, had a, a, a pretty successful career. But I always knew that there's always going to be something else. I'm going to have to get a job. Um, so I've always been planning for that, and that's kind of w- what I always thought was going to be my second career or my first career. Um, so, um, yeah, th- th- this is. Tell me, what's uh, what's what do you prefer? What, what's when you look back on on your life? What's what's the career that you prefer? So I, I'm. I, I also have like the second chapter of my yeah. life. I was Marine officer yeah. and then uh, just kind of packed it in and moved to New York and like, okay, I'm going to be a sports blogger and whatever this mm-hmm. is. Uh, so uh, what's, what's, which career do you look back on more, more fondly? What's, what's been, I mean, I think, you know, I, I think as I tell people, as a young person, there's nothing like being young and irresponsible with a lot of money. Oh. Like there's, you know, and I'm certain, you know. And I was young and irresponsible <laughs> with almost no money, and that was but, plenty of fun. Yeah, I think maybe just being young and irresponsible. That's yeah. probably. That's pretty fantastic. <laughs> I look back on those memories, and I'm like, wow, those were some fun times. And then, you know, you reality hits you, and you're like, oh, okay, I've got to actually do something. And, you know, family, and, and you know, I can't be irresponsible uh, past 35, I think. Because 35 is the cutoff, right? I think so. Okay. So 35, I said, you know what, I need to start settling down and, um um, but I look back on the years with the Chargers, like great memories, uh, lots of fun stories, have lots of long friendships. Um, and, uh, you know, those are those are some great times. Like I said, those are those are the those are the memories that I look back and I can laugh and I can have a drink with some buddies. And um, tell uh, me, tell me everything about Natron means everything. <laughs> I, uh, I was a huge I, I, I was I was the only person that played with the Jacksonville Jaguars mm-hmm. uh, on on the Sega Genesis version <laughs> of Madden. Jacksonville Jaguars. Was, I was he the only guy on there? Right? It was uh, Mark Brunel. I had a I had, I had, when Left he could it. run. Okay. Mark Brunel when he could run mm-hmm. and uh, threw a lot of passes to uh, Pete Mitchell, mm-hmm. the tight end. Was Jimmy Smith on there as well? Yes. Yes, yes he okay. was. And uh, but I was the only person that uh, played a ball control game in Madden. <laughs> I was like I'd try to hold the ball the entire time. Uh, it never worked because Natron would uh, would fumble by the end of the half because I oh handed I'd handed it to him uh, like he was twenty just worn times. Out, yeah. uh, it was so a- Natron, I mean Natron, he came to the team. Uh, was, he was a second round pick, and his uh, he was there with Marion Butts, who was our starting uh, running back at the time. And Natron got there. He was what two hundred forty pounds uh, when he was there, and you knew he was going to be a good running back. You knew immediately when he got there. He just needed to understand how to hit some holes. I remember the, one of the first games uh, where he had like a, a blowout game um, with the Miami Dolphins. And Miami Dolphins ran this funky twist on the line, and Natron's back there. He's shuffling, and, and I'm blocking this guy. I'm like, run, Natron, get in the effing hole. And he takes off. Down the field, runs about 40 yards. Obviously, he gets caught because, you know, that's <laughs> – I love you, Natron, but he always got caught. Like, for 30, 40 yards, he's going to get a big run, and he's going to get caught. So, um, 
And it's funny, he made this, he went, he was like running straight, and then you could tell him getting tired, so he like made this 45 degree angle towards the, uh, hey, towards the cone. Garbage trucks, <laughs> garbage trucks were not made for NASCAR races. So, um, but you knew, like after that run, I said, he's going to be, when you saw how explosively he could hit the hole and how he, he could get up into the hole, and uh, I knew he was going to be great after that. And then, you know, the rest is history. Uh, now the, uh, the the ninety four Chargers are are famous now for for a weird phenomenon, uh, and I don't talk to a ninety four Charger very often. So mm -hmm. I, if you'll pardon me for being indelicate, but like eight players have died from that yeah. team, uh, most recently and most notably Junior Seau's <coughs> so, suicide. But uh, uh, also this kind of came to uh, came to light when uh, Doug Miller uh, died by getting struck by lightning, lightning twice. Twice, yeah, yeah. Um, what? How close are you to your teammates now? Like, do, do, do these? Uh, uh, how does? Is there a network where uh, you, you guys are, are still in touch? How does it? How do these? How how have the deaths affected you? I mean, it's interesting. So I think you know, with most, or maybe it was back then. Like you know, when you retire, you leave the team. Everyone kind of scatters, and it takes a while um, for maybe you to reach out to individual players to see what's going on. I think um, you know, with the deaths and in succession, like it's, um, excuse me, you know, while we were playing, we had David Griggs and Rodney Culver, you know, car accident, plane crash, and then next offseason, Doug Miller, you know, um, you know, there were a couple of players that actually played with the Chargers that went to other teams who passed away. Frank Cornish, who was a great friend of mine, you know, he passed away, he had a heart condition, and a couple other offensive linemen, Kurt Whitley, who was my backup, um, great friend, and, uh, you know, he had some issues, and Sean Lee, and, you know, it's like every year in um, Lou Bush. And and so I think what it does is, like, it, it, it takes you back to time and it, it really, for me, makes me want to reach out and kind of experience, like, what were the good times? What were the, what were the things that I really enjoyed about that team and want to reach out and connect and kind of uh, um, talk about those good times and, you know, the good times we have with Junior and all the guys and all the, all the fun things that we did. Um, so... You know, it's 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 helped bring us back together, and obviously, social media being what it is has been a tremendous help as well. Yeah. Uh, on a lighter note, how how well do you remember the the, the Super Bowl? Is it is it kind of like a, a blur for you, or you know what sticks out in your? In I your remember memory? the first minute of the Super Bowl <laughs> because that was the happiest time of my. I was like, oh my god, fireworks! Run out to the field, kick off, and then a minute and four seconds, it's bombed to Jerry Rice. <laughs> And we get on the field, four, four downs and out. I'm like, okay, it's fine. You know, we're feeling them out. And then 20 seconds, Johnny Taylor. Do you, do like, you still hate Steve Young? Do you see, do you see I him don't on like, I don't really like Steve Young <laughs> at all. I mean, I wish there was something I could do. Like, oh, let's have a flag football game. I'm the center. And, you know, I'll let the guy through and, <laughs> you know, take out his knee. Yeah. That's... This once. Like, <laughs> please, like Steve. Like, it's the thing is, you know, I knew, like, I thought we had a, a great team, a great team together. Like, Steve, he was going to have many chances to go to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Like, how come he couldn't, like, let me have my... <laughs> or at least at least keep it close. You close. Know? I knew, I was like, we're going to cover the spread. There's no doubt about it. By the way, uh, for those uh, people who are not, the, the spread was 18 and a half. It was huge. I'm like, there's no way, no way we're going to lose the Super Bowl by more than 18 points. <laughs> I would stake my life on it. And like I said, after this, you know, after they scored, it took a total of like a minute and 40 seconds for them to score two touchdowns. I was like, we're in trouble. Oh. And, you know, the half, <laughs> the half time, I mean, there was Eric Moten, who was, uh, uh, he was a guard and he had hurt his knee and he gave the greatest halftime speech. Uh, I was like, you guys are playing like a bunch of fucking pussies. Da, da, da. <laughs> and um, it was a great speech, but we still... They went out and scored some more points. So. They were, it was one of the best teams ever <laughs> in all of NFL history. Ever. I don't think. Best offenses ever. You know what, you know what sticks out to, for me in that game? What's that? Kathy Lee Gifford singing the, 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 the national anthem. Did she sing it? Yeah. I I we actually, uh, I want, to, I want to, to play a little bit of a clip here. Oh. Um, I'd love to see that. It's, uh, I'm not going to get into the actual song. The anthem will be signed for the hearing impaired by Heather Whitestone and sung by television and recording star, my wife, Kathy Lee Gifford. Do you hear those boos? 
<laughs> the, the crowd, like, there's, it's probably like it's probably like two two thirds to half the crowd cheering, and a solid ha- like one third to yeah, half are booing. booing. Yeah, That's awful. That's awful. <laughs> uh, let's 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 before it goes into it, let's let's go ahead and cut that out because we awesome. don't. How do you get your wife to sing the soup? The I mean, because she's not like. Did they say national recording star? No, nope. like, no. She wasn't. Wasn't in a Broadway play. By the way, uh, I, I, I'm not. I don't want to play it. She. It sounds okay, but it's so very. Uh, it looks so lip sync to me. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Like, <laughs> how do you? I mean, like seriously, like how do you? Like that's. That's pretty cool. Like Frank Gifford must have been pretty powerful. And this but. was this was after Whitney Houston yeah. sang it. Like like th- just a couple of years after. Like this is a this is a very prominent like uh-huh. high. Like you can get any recording artist in the world to sing the national anthem. Hey, what's Kathy Lee Gifford doing? Uh, she's on TV. She can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. I cannot. I, I. That's incredible. That's <laughs> that's incredible that he she was on. The hugest stage in the world, and she's singing national. And why? I don't even know why she didn't say, "I'll I'll pass on this." One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to I want to host the Grammys. I want to host like okay, I'm on TV. I can wing it. But yep. you want to sing like, nah, I'll pass. Yeah, Al Gifford hooked her up. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's go to the troll back. Let's close things up with uh, some questions for you from Twitter. By the way, we got some very, uh, very insightful, uh, mm. smart questions about the world of finance, oh. and I, I ignored them all because they... Are you <laughs> sure it's the right show? Maybe they were trying <laughs> to say... Like, who, <laughs> who are you people? Well, you said insightful, and I was like, oh, this is the wrong show. They're, yeah, they're not. no, they are. They, <laughs> I'm sorry. We, are, we will not be getting into the Dodd-Frank Act. Is that even what it's called, the Dodd-Frank Act? There you go. Okay. Good job. Whew. I, I, I looked that up on Wikipedia last night. Uh, what's our What's our first question? Here we go. Uh, this is from uh, at Rich Roberts. Uh, is Courtney Hall available to play this Sunday in Pittsburgh? I am. I have my water bottle ready, and I, I'm I'm ready to go out and pass water to the, uh, to yeah. the team. That's as we about noticed, it. As we yeah. noted, the uh, the Chargers are uh, in dire in dire need of an offensive line. They need offensive line, but I think they need someone to bring the water bottles out. To mm. them. I can do that. Um, right. Same salary. Same salary as before. <laughs> Not, <laughs> not, yeah, I'm not gonna not gonna take anything less, but I will come and bring the water bottles. That's, out. That sounds fair. What's next? Uh, this is from Fart Hammer, uh, and I like that. Uh, this is his uh, his handle is at Fart Hammer One. <laughs> like Fart Hammer was already taken. I there's think a, he wanted to actually have you say that. This yeah. is, he made that up just for this. There's a lot of Fart Hammers out there. Uh, he says Stan Humphreys. What was that all about? Man, what is? I, I'm trying to figure out like what is the question. Um, I love Stan. I, I think Stan was great. He was great for he was great for what we needed at that time. Jim McMahon was my first quarterback ever, and um, a lot of crazy stories with Jim McMahon. Um, he was uh, he was crazy. Like Jim McMahon, like what you heard and thought, like nah, it couldn't be that. Way. Jim McMahon was crazy. Stan was a stable and stabilizing force. Yeah. Definitely what we needed. Big arm, loved him. Tough guy because um, you know. We had some. Uh, we let him have it a few times. Probably should. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Stan. But, uh, <laughs> That's it. It's a tough good. guy. Like I said, we he, we needed a tough guy back there because there were a few games that he needed to be tough. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. What's next? Uh, Bobby Big Wheel at Bobby Big Wheel says, "Is there more butt slapping in football or finance?" But slapping in football or finance? Hmm. I don't know. That's a good question. I, I would say more in finance. Really? Yeah, because like you're on you're on the you're on the if if you're on the trading floor like you know walking by oh great trade great trade football that's only saved for like the game days. Wow, yeah, yeah that's I, that's something I didn't think about. It. It's it's not all time. Yeah, you, you don't see it in practice. It's like people are like, hey, great play, and, uh, <laughs> save it for wait, the game. Wait, to yeah. practice. <laughs> <laughs> wait, why did you practice? smack my ass? Practice. Why are you so bad in practice? <laughs> practice. Come on, practice. <laughs> practice. Really? Anyway. <laughs> Uh, Practice? No. I got your Iverson. <laughs> uh, and then Who Day Revolution uh, has a, again, this is one of those uh, good questions. What are the three most important things NFL could do to help future players avoid ending up on the next 30 for 30 broke special? Uh, How about one thing? What are thing? the three things? One thing. Um, there, I don't think there's anything they can do. Really? I really don't. I mean, obviously, they could not pay them <laughs> until they are 30, maybe. Oh, um, so you just think people that- are young. I listen. I I told um, when I started in finance and uh, um, young kids making obscene amounts of money for, you know how how young they are. The only reason there's a difference is because you know people in finance have a longer time frame to make the money. Mm-hmm. I've seen 
people blow through money and crazy and uh, it's the same thing. It's young people giving money and being irresponsible. And like, you know, you can counsel people like, hey, don't do that. You know, try not to spend your entire paycheck. Like there, there, there were times I had friends come to me uh, having lost ten, twenty thousand dollars on a plane ride home. Just, just gambling. Just gambling. It is and, a lot of fun. <laughs> it's fun. And and they come like Courtney. Hey, I need to borrow some money. Like, what do you mean? Like, I lost twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, are you? kidding me you're serious right you're, you're not serious like yeah i lost twenty thousand dollars i'm like man eh. write him a check and then i follow them up when they're picking up their check i'm like come on you're coming with me because i'm getting my money back we're going right to the bank <laughs> i'm gonna wire transfer now because i'm not gonna wait to see what happens an hour later <laughs> next friday it's not gonna be there <laughs> not gonna be there you may not be with the team next friday oh, so man. Uh, but yeah so i mean it's kids are young and, and like i said i i was young and um I did some things and spent money in ways. Fortunately, I had a, a, a fairly uh, decent career. But also, I think a lot of the mis, mis um, perception is a lot of people don't. That a lot of kids aren't making a lot of money in the NFL. You know, you have a lot of people who are making two, three hundred thousand dollars. And that uh, that ESPN broke special was great. Like you end up paying taxes in every state that you taxes. play a game in. What the hell? Like FICA? What's a FICA? Who's FICA? What is this city tax? Why is Philadelphia taking money out of my <laughs> check? We went there. I was we there, there for a day and a half. <laughs> Not even. I was there for six hours, like all or whatever, twelve hours. I ate. You know, I ate at the restaurant. I had room service. I played in the game. We got on the plane and we left. And they're taking like fifty thousand dollars. You know, I got to pay. I'm like, what the hell is this? Ugh. Kansas City too, and I love <laughs> Kansas City. But what the heck? like? Those were the first two city taxes that I saw taken out. I was just like, this is insane. Insane. All right. Well, let's uh, let's close the show up. We're we're just about out of time here, and uh, start with their fumbler image of the week. This will be seen on my uh, column tomorrow in SB Nation, mm -hmm. and it is Eli Manning. I love me some good Manning face. Are you are you are you familiar? Like you have to notice this. Oh, that from the game last night, and. <laughs> He he and his brother make the very like when they lose games, uh -huh. just make the best like Places. they just got that Forrest Gump quality to him where you just really appreciate how how uh <laughs> that is a, it's I mean it's it's oh, I guess it's better than picking your nose. I mean you it's could true. Uh, it's, although it's you'll probably barely. look look for some shots of that. Uh the only people that even come close to the faces of the Manning brothers are like Jay Cutler and Philip Rivers, who uh they have some With a good, cigarette. Yeah, yeah, smoking Jay Cutler. Oh, man, that's great. That's... Well, all right, for these and more, check out Fumbler tomorrow. I'm so sorry. We did not even talk about uh, your your nonprofit, and we'll, let's make some time for that right now. Oh, great. So um, so I, I'm involved with three not, uh, not-for-profits um, on the boards of three. Juma Ventures, which is a not-for-profit based in San Francisco. We're coming to New York. We have San Francisco, Oakland, uh, San Diego, uh, New Orleans, and we're going to have um, – an operation here in New York. We just help break the cycle of poverty by providing kids with uh, uh, education and finance and jobs. And it's a great organization. It's much more um, well known on the West Coast, but we're, we're bringing it out east. Another foundation is the Family Center. Uh, we help uh, keeping families stronger longer. Uh, basically, we help uh, children who are uh, going through or whose families are going through life-altering situations, uh, whether it be long-term cancer or mental issues. And we help the kids, and we provide counseling services, housing, uh, mental, health, mental health services um, based here in New York, and we open our Brooklyn office. And also um, the Randall's Island Sports Fountain, or Randall's Island Park Alliance. Uh, it is uh, Randall's Island, which is in the East River. Yeah. Beautiful park. Um, soccer. Uh, uh, baseball, tennis, golf, uh, anything you want to do. It, you, you know, you think of New York being an urban center, but uh, you don't really think of all the, the great uh, parkland we have and things we have to, to offer. And we squeeze it into every little, every nook and cranny. Uh, and it's at really Reynolds impressive. Island, you have huge uh, waterfront art exhibits. There's, there's so many things going on out there. So I would encourage New Yorkers or anyone visiting New York to, to go out there and check it out. All right, and uh, is there a the best way to uh, to keep up on on these organizations would be your Twitter? 
Uh, my Twitter feed, uh, Courtney C. Hall, um, is my Twitter feed, or you know, friend me on Facebook. Uh, I'm the. I'm trying to think. My picture is a picture of Jean Michel Basquiat, and he has a helmet on, and he's in a suit, and uh, that's kind of my. I like it. Yeah. I like it. That's, that's uh, you know. I I also like that you're just uh, inviting uh, uh, strangers listening on the internet to just friend you on Facebook. That's just a really friend. nice thing. Yeah. There you go. I'm not going to say I'm going to accept it, but <laughs> definitely <laughs> roll, roll, the, roll those dice. Hey, you got to roll it right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for uh, for coming by, Courtney. This was a lot of fun. Uh, please uh, check us out on iTunes, and we'll see you next week. Thank you very Great. much. Sounds good. Thank you. Bye bye.